Eva Nichols here. Today I'm sitting and enjoying a cup of coffee out in my garden uh, and um, I was going to show you today how to paint uh, some evergreen trees. I'm so inspired by the beautiful evergreens we have up here in the High Sheriffs uh, in Northern California where I live and um, I wanted to show you how to paint uh, Jeffrey Pine, the um, incense cedar which is a gorgeous tree um, and then finally uh, the blue spruce which uh, I planted here in my garden uh, about three years ago and it's really taken off and I thought it was time to uh, try to paint it and uh, show you how to paint some evergreens that you can incorporate into your landscapes. Um, so uh, grab your brushes, grab your painting, uh, paint ma painting materials and uh, let's get started. So let's get started on painting um some of our evergreens and uh, first I'm just going to show you briefly what materials I'm planning on using. I'm going to use my good old standard palette and um, I will be using my cobalt blue, my French ultramarine blue, maybe my Antwerp blue, my burnt sienna and quinacridone gold and uh, I could potentially uh, throw in a little bit of quinacridone red, but whatever colors you have, uh, as you can see, is basically the primary colors, except for the burnt sienna is, you know, an earth tone, and that one you could totally mix yourself from uh, red and yellow, and then put a little bit of blue in it, just just faster to use it out of the tube. And um, I always like to use professional grade watercolors. Um, we are going to use some brushes. I'm most likely going to use my one inch wash brush, my half inch dagger brush, um, probably a number eight round and maybe a liner brush. Um, and then of course um, I might be using, or I know I will be using a cut up credit card or you could also use a palette knife if that works better for you. Um, whatever you have. Um, I might be using this brush here, it's just a flat, uh, short um, masking fluid brush. It has, you know, kind of nylon hairs and sometimes it can be good to lift out without, it's not a scrubber brush, so it won't damage the paper. I don't know if I need that, but if I do. Uh, and then of course uh, a pencil and a kneaded eraser and water. It's watercolor after all. I like to have two containers so I keep one clean for mixing my colors and diluting them. I cannot live without my spray bottles. Um, I like this one especially and it's unfortunately as far as I know not available right now. It's uh, the Holbein's Artist Watercolor uh, spray bottle but it's the one that has the dot behind the arrow and it gives um, fine dot pattern. I don't know if you can see that. But it, it gives a fine dot pattern whereas uh, the ones they have that just has the arrow on it gives, this one is not a uh, whole bind but it's the same principle, it just gives a fine mist and that's two different things. If you don't, and you can find other, you might want to go through your supply of various and sundry spray bottles because you can also find, especially those with the triggers, they can often make some good dot patterns too, like this one here. It's one I have from cleaning supplies. I, I always buy um, uh, them uh, online uh, because I have to get cleaning supplies that are fragrance free and the, the spray bottles there, they also will do a good dot pattern. So uh, you can do a little research if you are into the dot pattern bottles and if not, you can just ignore everything I said on that. Finally, for our supplies, we can also use some natural sponges, uh, just some little pieces. Uh, I've torn mine up, don't cut them so that they have straight edges. You want all those raggedy edges because they're going to come in handy to paint the foliage on some of the trees. 
We are going to paint evergreens and so I'm going to show you a couple of different types of evergreens. I'm going to show you the Jeffrey Pine, I don't know if you can see the drawing, and I'll have a, a picture of it that you can see. Um, and then I want to uh, paint the uh, cedar, the one we have uh, up here in the high shares is the incense cedar. They're gorgeous trees and both these trees when they get old and mature they're super super tall and typically they don't have any foliage on the first half to two-thirds of the big trunk so here I've just let them run off the page and I'm just going to show a little bit of the foliage. It doesn't mean they're dead but they just uh, drop the foliage over the many many years they live and, um, and often um, you'll have some of the dead branches sticking out. So we'll paint these two different types and then finally we're going to paint the um, a spruce and so the one we're going to be painting here, the one I'm inspired by is the blue spruce that I planted in my garden and you can see a picture of it here and I planted it about three years ago and it's really has really taken off and it loves it there so um, I thought that would be a fun one and here the the foliage and everything. Okay, so this is a blue spruce, but it's basically the same idea for any other type of spruce or fir tree. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the various directions of the branches. Uh, but that's what we're going to be doing. So um, I have done mine, my little um, sketches on uh, five by sevens, and I did it a little bit bigger, and then I put a little a quarter inch uh, tape around it just so I can get a nice border because I figured if they turn out really nicely I could frame them in little um, 8 by 10 frames where um, the opening would be uh, 5 by 7. So that's my idea and if they don't turn out they'll land in a drawer along with a lot of other paintings that did not make it to the framing stage. So I got my puddles out on my palette got my cobalt blue, I'm going to use that for the sky background. Um, I got French ultramarine blue and I got it in two spots and I got uh, burnt sienna and I also got that in two spots and then I got my quinacridone gold and my antwerp. Those are going to be my colors, so three blues, uh, one warm yellow and then the burnt sienna. So to get started we are just going to paint a little bit of the background in and um, don't worry so much about the branches. You can just paint like this with the clean water on either side of the truck, just so we can get a little bit of background in. And you could, of course, also just paint it on white paper, not worry about this, but I like to uh, make it into, quote unquote, a real painting. So there's water on the background and I'm painting down to that little line that I put in for the ground and now I'm just going to grab a little bit of my cobalt and I'm just going to run it in you can run it over the trunk doesn't matter just a little bit there we have it And if you want to, you can take your dagger brush or flat brush, whatever brush works for you, and you could make it thirsty. That means just squeeze all the water out of it and then just lift out cobalt from the truck. But it really is not a problem if there's a little cobalt left there. And I just had a hard edge there. I want it to be just soft. Yeah, that's good enough for a little sky and that has to dry of course and so while that dries we might as well grab um, the other evergreen we're going to be painting and that is um, the incense cedar which is also one of those big trunk um, evergreens and so we'll do the exact same thing and again I won't worry about painting over the branches a couple of branches I have there Paint down to the ground with clean water and there we have it. 
and just for a little variation I could go in and put just a hint of the uh, burnt sienna into my uh, French ultramarine, uh, no, my uh, cobalt and that'll make it a little grayer maybe it's a gray overcast day snow's ready to come oh gosh it's only August here so let's not think snow just yet shall we all right so then that's kind of fun to do a little bit of a gray tone and that was just by putting in a little tiny bit and I mean just a little tiny bit because I certainly don't want to paint smog we don't have that up here and uh, it's just a little tiny bit of your of your burnt sienna it goes a long way cobalt doesn't you know doesn't have much resistance so to speak it's not as strong a color as as the uh, burnt sienna so there we have it and here I could lift out with a tissue a little bit where I want some foliage not that it matters but you could so there we have that fix that little thing here and it just gives it a little background not much just a little bit that's all we want and while we're at it we might as well do it on the spruce tree because we're still waiting for the other two to dry oops I saw out of the corner of my eye I saw a couple of spots that needed to be fixed all right and there um, I'm going to get myself a little bit more of the cobalt blue now that I'm painting three skies and here how about if I take a little bit of my quinacridone red I'm just going to put a little bit out here and I could run a little bit of that into the third sky here for the spruce and here I'm really not going to be worried about painting over the tree lots of water go down to the little indication of the ground there you have it and then again let's run in some of that cobalt blue and let's just take a hint of that red just so we can get a little bit of that in the sky and you can see I'm doing it kind of on a diagonal diagonal stroke because I like that keep it very very light I don't know if you can even see it there you have it a little bit more there there leave it alone and I'm just going to let that dry it's going to be super pale okay our Jeffrey Pine has dried or the background has dried and now we are going to put some water inside our trunk and I'm not going to worry too much about the branches right this second just put water inside like this and I go down a little bit here and I think my light is coming from here it's a little bit lighter this part of the sky so that's what I have decided and I'll put a little bit of water outside in these branches I've indicated there so that's how I've put the water in inside the trunk not all the way out to the line and then a little bit uh, into the uh, side branches there and then I am going to start with the light side of my pine and I am getting some 
burnt sienna and I'm going to run that along the edge and I can get a little bit on the branches and I'm just running it down along the lighter side of the pine. Get a little bit into the branches and all the way down to the bottom and I'm just going to let it just kind of fade out down here for now and I'm not even going to rinse out my brush I'm going to go into my French ultramarine blue and you can see it's pretty thick loading up not my whole brush kind of like the first half and I'm going to flip it across so that it's easier for me to get to my tree trunk and here I'm also going out with that same color you see it's grayed down blue now and that's the shadow side of the tree and now I'm going to dip it back into the burnt shenna and I'm going to run that in and on top of the blue and that's going to change it to more of a gray brown color and now I'm going to go in and put a little bit of the dark color inside the branches over here on the light side let's get this one in also there And already you can see that's a pretty nice looking trunk already, I think. So now I'm just going to go in, fine tune, put a little bit more of the French ultramarine blue on my dirty brush. Going to do a few little stripey things down, make sure that it goes all the way up here. And put a little bit of darkness underneath these branches here, of course, bottom part of them would be in the shadow and I can also beef up over here and I can put extra dark underneath these branches because they're going to cast a little bit of a shadow and just filling in with some more color Get it nice and dark. Okay. Some more of the burnt shinna. There we have it. Really dark down here. And I want to make sure that my bottom here doesn't end up looking like you know the tree stuck on. So while I'm keeping an eye on the level of dryness of my tree trunk here I'm going to go in and put a little water on the bottom here and then I can go in and put a little bit of color on and here I could go in and put a little bit of yellow so I can get a little something greenish going on Especially here on the sunny side. A little bit of the French ultramarine in, get a nice green, combine them, and really dark on this side because that's the shadow side. So you can see already the tree is kind of growing up of the ground there. And let's just uh, do a few little things and we can put a little bit of spray on it so that it fusses out a little bit here that would be nice and that way we already have a little bit of a foreground to this tree there might want to put a little bit more darkness down here in the corners 
just grabbing mud from my palette and I want to make sure that down here it's nice and dark there all right so um, the shine has already left the tree trunk so I'm gonna grab my credit card and I'm gonna use the rounded corner here and I'm gonna scrape up in these patterns that it has so it's kind of a vertical lines that it has up along the trunk here they don't go like unbroken they, they are kind of I'm gonna show you the picture again so you kind of get the idea and you can see now because I waited I get some nice highlights on my trunk exactly like you see it out there in the dabble sunlight and I should hopefully be able to catch a couple of these branches before they have dried and I can pull in so that some of them come from the front side of the tree. They won't all come from the side or from the back. So we want to make sure we get that in there. And I'm going to go in and get some more French ultramarine blue in my puddle over here. Maybe a little bit more of the burnt shinna. Want to get a nice dark. And then I can go in before it dries and I can put some little line work in to indicate some of the deep shadows. Especially underneath the little branches would be good. Bring those out a little bit more. And there is your tree trunk. And if you have some markings that are a little too much, you can go in and correct them with the, the paint now. But I think I'm pretty okay with what I got here. I'm going to make the bottom these here a little darker. And here. All right. So you can leave it like that if you want it to just have the trunk. And I'm pretty okay with the bottom, the way it looks. Just for fun, I could scrape in a few little grasses coming from the bottom to kind of connect them with what we have going on out there. But I think that's good enough. And then the next step will be trying to put a little foliage on because I want to say that this is not a dead tree. It has some foliage left on the uh, one-third to two-thirds top part. Here you can see things are pretty much dry and um, I have my little sponge soaking in some water because you want it to have uh, soaked in water so that it's nice and soft, soft and pliable and then you want to take a tissue or paper towel and squeeze out all that water so that it's just barely damp. That's very important. And then I'm going to um, dip my sponge and I'm going to dip it in a little bit of the um, quinacridone gold first. And I'm going to put some of that over here on the sunny side of the tree. And I'll put some down on here. This is as far down as I want to go with my... Put a little bit in here too. Be on the other side as well. There. There. And I'm not going to rinse it out. Now I'm going to dab it into a mixture of the Antwerp Blue and the Burnt Shenna. That makes such a good, good evergreen color. And get that in here. And the idea is to try and get it in before things dry. So things are too wet. There we have it. And I also want to get a little bit of the French ultramarine blue into this mixture. Because that does a great job. And 
just vary your shapes and your sizes and they tend to be a little bit wider with the foliage and make sure you cover up some of the trunk with um, the foliage this here is too watery that's the problem so I'm gonna just beef it up a little bit and I'm gonna dab again and get some darker especially underneath and there and connect them get a little bit of the burnt shine in cover up the trunk and let's see I think that reads pretty nicely there there and now I just need to beef it up a little bit a couple of areas that are too watery get some of the real darks in and the main thing is your edges that your edges look right there I think we're good and we'll call it a day I'm going to rinse my little sponge out put it back in the bath and uh, there you have a very believable Jeffrey Pine could also be uh, some of the other pines and um, you can observe the pines in your area some pines they don't have these um, uh, striated areas in the bark so take a look and uh, paint accordingly the next tree we're going to do here we did the Jeffrey Pine, is the Incense Cedar, which is similar in looks to a certain degree to the Jeffrey Pine. But I still wanted to get it in here because I love these cedar trees. They're so gorgeous. So we're going to use the same method. We're going to put some water inside the trunk. And here the trunk on cedars, they spread out a little bit at the bottom and you can see some of the roots. So that's one thing that's different and they are much more reddish orangey reddish in their in the trunks uh, that color orangey reddish and uh, so this time I think we're going to put our light source over here just to mix it up and that also makes sense with my sky um, and so we are going to start actually with putting some of our quinacridone gold on and I'm putting it on kind of in a stripy manner and I'm not going to worry too much about the um, the branches yet and without rinsing out my brush I'm dipping my tip into some of the quinacridone red I want to get that in so we get kind of like a bright orange color a little bit more of the red as we move over here And so you can see I put it on like more stripy. And I'm not rinsing out my brush still. And now I'm going to go in and get some of the burnt sienna on my brush. And now I'm starting to get over also to the shadow side with my burnt sienna. And down here. All right. I am now going to not rinse out my brush again but I'm gonna dip into the French ultramarine blue and I'm gonna go and get some of that on I'm gonna put some over on the other side but not a whole lot down here and get a little bit more of that on okay and I'm going to take a little bit of the uh, burnt shina on and get it out on these couple of branches I have here. I think I'll get a little bit more of that connecting gold on here. Rinse out my brush. Get a little bit more of the connecting gold on. And now I'm going to put a little bit of the dark 
darkness underneath here and underneath there, underneath there. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing I did with my last painting. I'm going to just put a little bit of water on the bottom here. So now this side is going to be the lighter one and this side is going to be the darker one. There. Some more of that blue in. There we have it. I'm going to put a little bit of that blue in again here. Okay. And I am going to rinse up my brush and I want to put a little bit of darkness underneath here. I'm just biding my time really for when it's the right time to start getting color on here. Put a little bit more red on. Um, so now we are going to grab our credit card and this time first we're going to scrape a little bit with the really pointy part and now it's going to be longer scrapes because these here really have more of a longer pattern of these vertical lines. And now I'm going to switch to the uh, rounded corner and I'm going to go and get some of these long patterns of highlights. And they're pretty close together. So there we have it. I think this is about right now. Okay. So now we go in again with our dagger brush here and we load it up with a mixture of blue and the burnt shinna. Get it like almost a black. And we do some of the shadow things, the shadows, the, also in long stripes. And you know, that's gonna, since it's still damp, it's gonna spread. And try and see if you can get in behind some of those highlights you scraped out. We can go back in and scrape again if we need to. So there's, you know, it's not like one shot and that's all you got. I want to get some of that in, especially on the shadow side, and I want to get some in here, underneath there, and underneath there. And then we want to get in and see if we can pick up some of these cracks that, you know, at the bottom here where the roots are splitting out be really good if you can get some really nice darks in a couple of places. Can you see? So that you can kind of indicate those roots and make sure we get it nice and dark there. And we want to get a little bit of darkness. And then before it's too late, let's scrape out a little bit on the branch here. so that we can see that it's coming from this side of the tree and the same with this one here. And then let's get it really dark underneath, really dark underneath. And we can get some more of these out. And then again, we're going to grab our credit card and see if we can scrape some of those roots out into 
there and then we'll give them a little color little of the burnt shenna color here and there and let's load up again with that really rich dark that's created by the French ultramarine blue and the burnt shenna and it's emphasized some of these cracks here could also be one here there and then you can go in put a little bit of that burnt shenna on and just run that in couple of places. There we have it. I'm getting to be pretty happy with this so far. So good. Yeah, that looks like those beautiful cedars in my view. Let's see. Just, you know, fine tuning and Dab out a little bit here. Got a little carried away. There we have that. There. That's more like it. And now we're going to do the same thing for the foliage. There's not as much foliage here. Um, but I have something I need to cover up right there. Of course I goofed with the red, but that's okay. So I decided to switch from the um, Antwerp blue to use indigo instead because the foliage on these um, on these uh, cedars is super duper dark so I'm gonna first dab into burnt shenna and I'm gonna go like that and I'm gonna go a little bit on the other side too and now I'm gonna dab into the indigo and I'm going to cover up some of the trunk because otherwise it just doesn't look right and so that it does look a little more green I'm going to put in a little tiny bit of the um, quinacrino gold is what I'm using here like that and let's go in just do a little bit more and make sure you get these nice lazy edges and have air holes so that the birds can fly through. I would like to say that the birds have to fly through. So you can even drag it a little bit. Just make sure you don't get anything too solid. And nice and lazy edges. And I think I should stop right now. There. A little bit darker, right down there, of course it's on the shadow side. And over the tree a little bit. There. A little bit darker down there. And I'm going to leave it alone. And here we have a beautiful cedar. And so now we have two evergreens. They're kind of, sort of, a little bit alike. But there are still, you know, differences. And when you put, when I put them next to each other, man, I've zoomed in so you can see better. So I'm scrambling for space here. And better not get my dirty fingers. This is a dirty process, folks, if you haven't noticed. I hope you didn't have a manicure yesterday or something. Here we have it. Incense Cedar, Jeffrey Pine. And then I'm going to do one more that's very different, and that is the Blue Spruce. And uh, that'll be next. So, the blue spruce. I have done a little color swatching here with my blues. Um, this is cobalt blue with um, a little bit of the quinacridone yellow, uh, quinacridone gold, sorry. This is uh, French ultramarine blue with the uh, quinacridone gold. And this is my peacock blue with the uh, quinacridone gold. And then here is my Antwerp with the quinacridone gold. 
I like these three first ones the best. I think this one goes too green too quickly um, since it's a blue spruce. And what I'm going to do is I laid out the blues I want to use. I think I'm going to put a little bit more of that peacock. That's from Holbein. I, if you don't have that, you know, a turquoise from any brand might uh, do the trick for you. And otherwise, I really like the uh, cobalt the best, to be honest with you. So um, don't worry about it if you don't have a peacock or turquoise. It's a French ultramarine blue. That's going to be for the darker parts, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dagger brush. I'm going to put clean water on it. And first, I'm going to run it down the middle, down to here. And I'm probably going to run it a little bit of water out for the foreground here. I usually like to do that. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my French ultramarine blue. And I'm going to run down and lay in a little bit of a trunk. Like that. Just a little bit. Don't want to go crazy with that because we can't see the trunk very very much, but we we do see it peeking through here and there. So that's why I want to get it in, and it kind of gives me a reference point when I paint. So I did it like this. So it's kind of like a bluish brown, and I'm going to let it run out a little bit here. And again, I should probably decide. where my light source is. So here there's really no real indication. So I'm going to run it in from the left here. And then I'm going to rinse out my brush. And then with um, just with water, I'm going to just pretend that I'm already painting. And with water, because I want my my brush when I have pigment on it to hit some dry and some wet spots, a mixture. So I get a variety of um, texture and edges. I get soft, I get, I get uh, hard edges. So that's my plan. So there's that. Can you see a little bit? All right, so then let's grab my cobalt blue, put a little tiny bit, and I mean little tiny bit of that um, quinacridone gold in. And then with the tip of my brush, I'm just gonna go in and get the foliage in. And I hope you can see now why I did that water thing. Can you see how lovely it is when I'm hitting dry and then I'm hitting wet areas? And I'm just going to continue and mix uh, the color up a little bit. And I want to get it pretty light to begin with because I can always go in and darken. This is a lot of fun, but you've got to be, you know, just without fear. I think it was uh, Camilla. She has her own channel here, Skillshare. She's a really good watercolor artist from Denmark, my home country. And uh, she said that she had watched somebody, uh, I think on YouTube, and he had said, first thing is, you've got to let go of fear. And she thought that was such a good piece of advice and I actually will agree with her. It's a very good piece of advice. Put a little top up there. And run in some more. And I'm varying the color just a little bit. And uh, just with the, the um, cobalt and the quinacridone gold. It's hard to uh, talk when I'm this involved and I think down here I might just try and give it a couple little spritzes. I think that was a 
little too much, so dab that off. And okay, I'm pretty happy with how this is shaping up. Now it's just a matter of putting in a few little details with a um, little bit more darkness here and there. So then I think I'm going to jump over and mix some French ultramarine blue into this mix I already had. That's going to darken it up a little bit. And it's going to be, I like to get it in while things are still damp so it'll spread on its own. So it's going to be especially in here in the middle and underneath of course. And a little bit over on the shadow side. So that's going to work out really, really well. And underneath here, definitely, some of those darks. See if we can get a little bit more feathering. Have my, I dried my brush a little bit. A, bit. a little bit of feathering, some of those tiny little ones out here. And now, I think I want to go in and get a real dark, but still very blue. And I'm going to go in and just do a little bit like this on the shadow side. I think it's, there's a couple of tipping lights right there. darkness down the trunk here and then we want to get some nice dark here just let that run out get some darkness in here. I'm pretty happy with what we got going on so far. And I think just a couple of little things that I would like to do. Um, let's see here. There's a couple of areas where I feel I need to just connect a little bit. So now I have my little wiggle brush Got to be very careful that we don't get all of a sudden destroy this lovely looseness with uh, all sorts of detail. That's that's the temptation. Um, so don't want to do that. Just want to build in a little bit more darkness down here. I needed some, and then I could totally leave it like that. I think that reads very nicely. Thank you very much. Um, but since I am the instructor, I'm supposed to go out on a limb once in a while. So I'm thinking I want to see if I can scrape out a couple of highlights, you know, in that's like here on the front part. There. I think I want to leave it like that. And then make sure they're not too same old, same old. And you don't have to do that. I don't know if it did much. Maybe a little bit. So there we have it. I'm going to leave it. And call that a blue spruce. So three different evergreens in one foul swoop and once I take the masking off and everything I think it'll look really really nice and they could uh, totally be framed you could on this one here since it's a little uh, bare up there I could uh, put in a couple of birdies why not
there you have it. Some little birds flying. And I hope you have fun with this. Try it out. And now, you know, the whole idea is that you can incorporate trees in your landscapes. So stay tuned. Happy painting. Thank you.